finish it. You reconcile this account. Woohoo! To see the report, let's say, okay, let's check out the report. So let's go then. So let's go then to the summary information up top. And then we've got our reconciliation. If I go into the reconciliation, here is our report. Now, the point is, notice that the layout of the report is, it looks a little bit different than some of the other reports. And that's in part because this report is not constructed the same way as the other reports. The other reports are being constructed as we do the data input, as we enter these forms, like in a, same, in a similar fashion as we have seen with the balance sheet. Even the subsidiary reports are still being constructed as we do the data input. This report is being constructed by us comparing our data input to the bank statement. And notice it, it can't be a report that can just change in the same way as, as another report like a balance sheet report. Because if I was to go back and delete a transaction that I did in the past, it would throw off the bank reconciliation, right? So, so this is a report that's really, it's kind of static in time. And that, that's one of the reasons that might draw up or, or be pulled up a little bit differently. Now they've kind of adjusted the, the look and feel of the report uh, a little bit over time. So now they've got the kind of summary up top and then the details down below. So let's just recap what we have here. First, we've got the summary information. This is the statement beginning balance. This comes from the bank statement. Boom, just recapping the data. This is the checks and payments that have cleared the 111829. If we checked everything off as it should, that should also match the bank statement. These are the deposits they cleared. Once again, if we did it correctly, then generally that will match what is on the bank statement for all the increases to the bank statement. And then we have the statement ending balance which is the ending balance on the bank statement. So this is just recapping what we already knew on the bank statement. So that's not really what I would call the bank reconciliation. The bank reconciliation starts in essence here at the statement balance. And, and then we've got the difference between that and the register. So here's the unclear transactions. That's really what we're looking for to get us to the register balance. So obviously the 61, 241, 85. If I pull up the trusty calculator to do some trusty calculations and we're going to say, oh, I squished the calculator. That's too squished. It's going to be 61241.85 plus 27403.4. That gets us to the 8864525. There's the, the 8864525 on the balance sheet. So that's the reconciliation. So th this little piece right here, that's the whole reconciliation to me. However, well, I'm missing a fundamental component, which is this component. It's all squished together in one number. What I want to know is what makes up that 2740340. I mean, if I was an auditor, for example, and you gave me this summary component and that's all you gave me, then it's like, oh, great. What, what did you do? You told me, yeah, this is the balance on the bank statement. And this is the balance on the books which I can see. And then you just said the difference is made up by 27,403,40. Well, great, you subtracted the two. You're not telling me anything, right? What, what are those differences? I need to be able to see what those differences are. And that's why you need the detail down below. This down here, unclear transactions after, this is not really necessary for the bank reconciliation as of uh, 131.23. So again, it's kind of, they give you a lot more information than you really need. These three numbers are what you need. And then you need the detail for that 27.403.40. So down below, you've got the detail. Checks and payments that have cleared. This is just going to basically match what has cleared on the bank statement. So that's not really what we're looking for so much because we already have it. It's kind of redundant. These are the deposits that have cleared. Again, that's on the bank statement, so it's kind of redundant. So, okay, that's good. Uh, and then we have the unclear checks and payments. This is what we're looking for. This is going to be the, the items that we have not yet cleared. They're in our books, but they're not in the system. Again, I can double check. Even though these didn't clear in January, they might clear in February. And because we did the bank reconciliation sometime in March, most likely, because we didn't get the bank statement till sometime in March, we can then see if they did clear. And if they did clear, then I have good verification that these are legitimate timing different transactions. And then down here, we've got the uncleared 
uh, deposit. That's the, the deposit side that wasn't cleared. So that means that this 34.0207250 minus the 6669.1 is the 27.403. There's the difference. So it's a pretty, still pretty long kind of convoluted report to get to, to get to the area that we want to get to, but that's the general idea on the report. Now note that you might want to print out these reports if you have these timing differences, because then it's nice to have a hard copy because if someone went in here and they deleted a check or they deleted one of the unclear transactions or something like that, then it's going to mess up your, your, your bookkeeping system. That's why you would want to close the books after you've done the bank reconciliation or something like that, or be very careful of, of adjusting anything after doing the bank reconciliation to a prior period. So sometimes if you have a hard copy, then you can, you can go back in and fix things. It's the bank wrecks are one of those reports that if you have multiple bank wrecks, sometimes it's harder to go back into the past and pull the prior bank wrecks up. Uh, and so we'll see, you know, how they, how they store the bank wrecks when we get to, uh, after we do the second bankrupt reconciliation that we'll do. Now notice in here where the bankrupts are located. So I'm not under the, the reports right now. I'm in accounting and then I'm in the, so we have the chart of accounts. We've got the reconciliation and then I'm in the bank register and the reconciliation summary. I believe you can find the reconciliations in the reports as well. So if I was to go to the drop down and go to the the reports on the left hand side and you could type in you know bank reconciliation i think it's just reconciliation they call it reconciliation reports or i believe they're down here i think they put them under the accounting for your accountant reports so let's just check them out for my accountant you've got your reconciliation report so this is another way you can go in here 